And then we move on to second readings, which is motions that we'll be voting on that day. And then written agenda, which is motions that were just put in. So we kind of discuss those and throw them back and forth. And then we'll vote on them next week. And then there's open agenda, which, you know, if there's an issue that wasn't in the written agenda, anybody can bring up. So you can say pretty much anything on the floor. Of other parenting styles at all. I think what frustrates me about other parents is when they think that they know better than their kids. That this life is about radical unschooling, is about trusting your children and their choices and knowing that they know what's best for them, not, not us. Uh, I totally trust them in whatever they want to do. And it frustrates me when other parents are mean to their kids through punishing them and treating them like crap. I mean, everywhere you go, you see it. You see parents hurting their kids verbally, and, and it's so okay in our culture, but it, it's, not, it's not to us. So um, we're definitely paving new uh, <laughs> trails, living this life of respect with our kids. We have no. And when that's over, we're adjourned. It's exciting and it's interesting, but the reason that it's the most interesting to me is because I really care what's going on in school. I mean, a lot of people, when there's something going on in JC that they think is important, will go to JC, and the same thing with school meetings. And I think it's really, really great because I learned a lot from being JC clerk, and I am learning a lot from being school meeting chairman, and the whole process is one of the things that people benefit most from this school. Is there any discussion of the results? While in Britain, Montessori is only now beginning to widen its association beyond the private sector. There's a huge level of misunderstanding about Montessori. People think that we are a sect. They also believe that it is education for rich kids. Britain has got such a strong ethos of private education and we had no funding for preschool education until 19... 98 or 99, I mean, you know, early years are relatively new addition to the educational system. So in Britain, inevitably, Montessori could only develop in the private sector, whereas I think that there's a very strong sense of social justice in Holland. Actually, she was born in a named her Dakota and when she was around three years old. She said that uh, I, I don't feel like a Dakota. That's not me. That's not my name. My name is Tiffany and I want to be called that. And uh, She's 10 now, and we've respected that for seven years, and we're legally going to change her name when she's ready, whenever she says. We're happy to do that. Tiff uh, wears a wig um, because she loves, she feels more herself when she has her wig on or her hat on, and we've al always respected that. What hasn't happened, apart from, say, Holland and, and the States, is that it's got embedded into the state system so much, but I think that we're now in a situation where that seems to be happening more and more. <laughs> In fact, uh, I, don't, I don't think we hold college as um, in any higher regard um, compared to like an apprenticeship or something that if our kids want to go to college, great, but it's definitely not a goal and a focus. Um, it's only a choice for them. Right. And with the internet nowadays, you know, learning can happen right at your fingertips, so you don't need to go anywhere to learn. And there's this whole movement called UnCollege where, um, you know, people are sharing that you can learn just as much at home or, you know, out pursuing your interests you know, through different resources that are available, that college is really just a money trap, and uh, our kids never have to get sucked into that um, if it's not something they want to be, be doing. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> and we're the Martins. <laughs>
um, because they want to have complete autonomy and they want only to be accountable to the families who are at the school and not to a grant organization and not to public, you know, to the government. Um, and we have um, been a little bit different from that in that when we built our buildings, we raised money um, for the for those improvements. He dresses really uniquely. I think people that see him that are like more mainstream probably think he looks pretty radical or dresses kind of weird, but I love that he can be himself and he's not following anyone else's style or fashion other than his, his own, so that's a pretty cool side effect. Yeah. Our daughter Tiffany, um, well, Tiffany's name, her, her given name is Dakota. Actually. But we, for the operating expenses, the ongoing daily operating expenses, we only use tuition to support that. 100% um, of our money comes from uh, private tuition. Um, now our tuition is only uh, half of the cost of the tuition of the next highest school in the area, so it's very, very inexpensive. Um, and we, our tuition is about $6,000 a year, which is higher than some of the, the other Sudbury schools. But our assembly has voted to raise the tuition so that our staff could be paid a wage that you can support a family on. And if you put it into perspective as well with the other private schools in the area, only the church-run schools are less than we are. It's not unusual for students um, in the area to be spent paying, or parents to be paying fifteen to twenty-two thousand dollars for a private school. So we're a pretty good deal. When I did the experiment, when I did the test after two months, the score was seventy-six percent there was photographic recall inside the children. I suspect because they're discussing with each other. A single child in front of a single computer will not do that. I have further results which are almost unbelievable of scores which go up with time. And we, we per intentionally keep the tuition as low as we possibly can um, to try to make the school available to, to anybody. And we don't want it to be just exclusively to uh, the, the upper class or the upper middle class. We want to make sure that it's, that it's available to working families as well. What a lot of Sudbury schools do is they base it on what it would cost if, they, if we were paying out of pocket to send our child to public school, like what it costs for a child. Um, ours is $3,500, which is actually pretty inexpensive. It's about half the price of the private schools in the area. One of the reasons why I chose it initially is because we could afford it. I also sort of figured it out, like, the schools are open from 9 to 5 p.m. Most, most schools, um, the public schools might be free, but they charge for an after-school care program. When you look at the cost of tuition for our school, it's actually not that much more than if I had her in an after-school care program till fall. Besides, it amounts to littering. John, how do you plead to littering for drawing? Guilty. Haru? Guilty. Lillian? Guilty. All right. Thank all right. All in favor of giving them no. all outside no. pickup next available four days. All in favor. All, in favor. all opposed. Yeah. Motion passes. Whether you are a single parent uh, having a child with minimum wage or you're a single parent child having multi million dollars, both should be able to come to the school. There are some very, very, very poor families that stuck over the school and. Uh, if they can't afford it, then we really try to give them as much of a scholarship as possible. Some families that have more than one student have one or two complete scholarships. We're, we want our students, but uh, we're hoping that it won't be a problem, that people use that as a claim against us. Sudbury Valley is unimpressed by moves towards greater personalization or negotiated learning. It has to be all or nothing it's still patronizing. It's, it, as a matter of fact, it's worse than the most uh, traditional and, and rigid of the, of the other schools. Traditional schools that are rigid, at least 90% of the people who go there hate them and they know the enemy. A school that is letting you, allowing you to have a little bit of freedom seduces you into thinking that the little bit of freedom where you're really being manipulated is the real thing. And that opens you to being manipulated all your life in Israel, but we don't think it's true. We really want to have a school that's as diverse as possible. That's been one of our big struggles, I think. So if somebody can't afford to send, uh, to send his or her child to Sapporo Valley School, is there any possibility that it can go to Sapporo Valley? Um, is there anything like 
scholarship. We have something called the Emergency Tuition Loan Fund um, that was started probably seven or eight or ten years ago. Um, and the purpose of that fund is to allow a student that's already been attending the school to continue to attend the school if his family should have some kind of financial hardship. The Sudbury Valley model has been adopted at more than 30 other schools, mostly in North America, but also on a smaller scale in Denmark, Holland, Belgium and Germany. Nowhere is it considered the soft option. It's the hardest school to be in, and you ask the kids and they'll tell you it's the hardest. Okay guys, it's Reid here. Bringing you breaking news that just broke maybe a couple hours ago. Uh, Shane Bahannon has been dismissed from Louisville, from the basketball program, and it looks like this time it's for good. Society which we can't even imagine, and that whereas a hundred years ago what children needed to do was to learn what adults already knew before them, we now have to prepare children for totally unforeseeable circumstances. So showing them how to do something where we know the answer is not the answer. We try to educate children now so that they can find answers to questions that we haven't even thought of yet. So after Shane Bahannon made the same mistake over and over and over and over. <laughs> so you know what's happened? I think we've just stumbled across a self-organizing system. A self-organizing system is one where a structure appears without explicit intervention from the outside. And over, and over, and over, and over. Self-organizing systems also always show emergence, which is that the system starts to do things which it was never designed for, which is why you react the way you do, because it looks impossible. I think I can make a guess now. Education is a self-organizing system where learning is an emergent phenomenon. And over, and over, and over, and over, and over. It will take a few years to prove it experimentally, but I'm going to try. But in the meanwhile, there is a method available. One billion children, we need 100 million mediators, there are many more than that on the planet. 10 million souls, 180 billion dollars, and 10 years. We could change everything. Thanks. And over, again, and over, and over, and over again. See that schooled kids get to see their friends. Culture shock and culture clash with schooled friends. That's, that's a thing that happens. Number seven is financial disadvantage slash only the privileged can unschool. Louisville finally, Rick Bettino, I'm sorry, has finally decided we have to let this kid go. He just failed 25 drug tests, and I guess that is what it takes to get dismissed from a Louisville, is to fail pretty much a drug test a week for two years, and you're pretty much guaranteed to not play again. It gives you sort of an idea of how you should say it. What teachers can do sometimes if a person wants a specific answer to a specific question, they can give them that. But the most of us in life, we go about learning things. I mean, you and I and anybody else really, if they think about their lives, they'll realize that most of what they got out of life, they've learned somehow on their own and they found ways to, to find out what they want to know rather than have sitting in front of somebody who's telling them. I know, I know. It's another taboo thing to say in the unschooling community, but it's true. Only people who have enough privilege can unschool. There is of course a financial disadvantage, especially when you're younger, but that I think continues throughout being a teenager. So you expect then a child to sort of stumble across Shakespeare? Or... Well, no, not really, because they're sitting and talking and hearing other people stumble across these things. The whole of humanity stumbled across these things. Oh, I mean, gonna... imagine yourself in Shakespeare in England, you know? Uh, he wasn't even that much more famous than the other people. All of humanity has stumbled over time over, over the kinds of things that we now treasure. And there's no reason to think that people won't pick out of all the world of information new things that people will treasure. Is that really, it's really good to have one parent home to be able to 
you know, help facilitate whatever needs to happen around the house, help facilitate any learning. You can't leave your little ones alone, so you're probably going to end up with one parent bearing the financial burden, and that's just not possible for everyone. Not Unschooling is not right for everyone, but it's also not possible for everyone.